you up from the side of the road, they assess your condition and they take you not to the nearest accident and emergency department, they take you to the one where they think that you will get the best care. So if you have had a heart attack, you will drive past a number of emergency departments in that ambulance to go to a heart attack centre. That heart attack centre for us is at Hammersmith Hospital. If you've had a major road trauma, you don't go to any A&E, you get taken directly to a trauma centre. These are key changes that have already occurred in terms of dealing with people with critical conditions and that will continue to happen into the future as we continue to specialise our services. We know that in the first year of introducing major trauma centres in this country that the death rate dropped by 30%. We know that now if you're treated in a heart attack centre, your likelihood of survival has gone up from 15% further. You've heard all this before. Exactly. That's what I was trying to say earlier. It's the same over and over. Triple, triple. All the time. It's, it's PR. Sorry. PR. Can we have some quiet, please? I'm going to take three more questions because this is becoming ridiculous. I want the lady there. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. all these meetings. We pay your bills. We pay your wages. We, we are the patients. We are we the taxpayers. Yes, Not exactly. You. We are. Why Our you children are. Why haven't you told us how much money you will raise from selling the land at Cherry Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Not you won't it. mention finance. Because it's your property. It? But you can close yes. down. Yes. You can close. It's disgraceful what you're doing. You can close the dialysis at Charing Cross, the twilight shift, all those patients that don't even know where they are. You can take away 16 beds in the kidney unit and throw out, three days later, the donors that have their bodies chopped exactly. open for the first time. Exactly. Don't tell me. We know Do the not stories. preach to me. We live there. Do not preach to me. If We're this there. Is that hunt, this is Jeremy Hunt. NHS. See what you do, you selfish, selfish people. Do not people. tell me. So can we just have a little calm, please, and less emotion? Uh, you have to. Let, let's just, just, just. It's not control. It's upsetment. Look what you're doing. Calm. That calm. I'm sorry, but please understand that there isn't anyone, there isn't anyone in this room around this board table that is not here to deliver the best quality health care to patients. But you haven't thought it through. For any other reason. We're not here for any other reason. Sorry, We're here to provide you with the best no, I'll take them out. Come They're on. Really and therefore, it's been all these decisions and all Shame on you! These decisions shame, are not shame, made. Shame. These decisions are being made by Shame on you! Look what you do to your patients! These decisions are being made by commission so that we can provide you with the best possible health care. In 1972, my, my father, my father, at the age of 60, had a stroke. Do you know what they did with him? They left him at home. Why? Because they had a clue what to do. Today, he would be alive. Andrew Marr is a perfect example of a man, young man, who had a stroke. And do you know what happened? He, he went to a hyperacute stroke centre where they had all the tests. Yes, no. The point is that medicine, medicine is changing dramatically. It is changing. We have to change with it, and it's critically important. Be rational. That's all. About emergencies that are not covered under what Tracy has been talking out of the back of her head to these people. Why are you not facing your audience? Sorry, this is. No, no, this is a board meeting. This not, is not this is a board meeting. But it's about our house. We're having a board meeting. It's a public board meeting. Yes, but, but it's a board meeting. Yes, but, but it's a board meeting. We have to work with ourselves. You can come and listen. 
We are not there to have a public no, board meeting so the public can vote. Oh, this is a board meeting. So let's absolutely yeah. be clear about that. We wanted this arrangement so we could make presentations, so you could see the information. And I'm sorry if you feel that that was not the case. We're here to help you. We're not here to antagonise you. We're here to provide the best quality health care. But you're not answering well, the question. You're not answering the question. Order, because sometimes we don't know the answers to the questions. Oh, we don't have every answer. We're in transition. So I'm going to take two more questions and then the, the meeting is over. Let's check in with you. Sorry, you said that I could. Okay. Um, I was a bit concerned about the answer to that lady because she was talking about walking patients, not, not the ambulance ones. And I'm concerned about um, a lot of your plans, as I understood from um, this presentation here, uh, and the pathways rely on Charing Cross backup. Uh, what happens when Charing Cross Type 1 ED goes? Um, there's going to be beds going and all acute services going. So I'm very concerned about that. Also, uh, who is going to monitor the quality of urgent care uh, doctors? Because they're private. <coughs> they're, uh, they're commissioned by a private company. So that's two questions, please. Okay. Uh, I, have, I, I did have um, occasion to go to an urgent care centre in Charing Cross and I was not at all happy with, um, I was in extreme pain, I couldn't talk, uh, my husband wasn't allowed to um, tell the GP what was wrong with me, uh, it was obvious I was in extreme pain. I eventually managed to uh, say various things and copious notes were written by a GP who didn't speak very good English uh, and then when I was passed on to the class one uh, A&E, the proper A&E, and I was actually admitted um, for some, time, some days because of all of this, I had to go through the same thing again. So what you were talking about, I think it was... Reassessment. The reassessment. reassessment. I had to have that when you go from urgent yeah. care onto the A and, uh, proper A&E, I had to go right through it again. And where are the electronic notes for that transfer? Okay. When you're right. having electronic notes for transfer, you're doing the transfer, it's the real thing. But if you're gonna do it in one place, what about the electronic notes being typed up there and available by the time they're transferred to the next hospital, being there available to read on screen? Have you got that in process on, on your IT can, can you answer okay. both those questions? I, I, want, I want to know whether these GP private GPs are properly monitored. So in terms of the monitoring of GPs, I'll get uh, Dr. Chris Harrison to speak to that. I'll speak to the first part of your question and the last part of your question. So in, in terms of the first part of your question, which was around um, presenting to an urgent care centre, and I think it was the Charing Cross Urgent Care Centre you are referring to, what would happen if you're not you've not got the sort of condition that um, it could be treated and admitted at Charing Cross. What would happen is exactly the same as if you presented to another hospital, such as the Hammersmith Hospital, or indeed such as St Mary's Hospital, if the specialist services that you needed were not available at that site. So let me give you an example um, at St Mary's Hospital. If you presented to St Mary's Hospital, and you're actually acutely unwell with a renal condition, what would happen at the moment is you would be stabilised at St Mary's Hospital and then you would be transferred to our Hammersmith Hospital where we deliver our renal services. We do not have every specialty represented at every hospital in this country. No organisation does. So the, the role of an urgent care centre in that situation or the role of an accident and emergency department is to make sure that you're safe, to make sure that you're stabilised, to treat you if those specialty services are on that site, and if not, to safely transfer you to where those specialty services are. So that's what happens today, that's what hap would happen in the future. In terms of the need for assessment and reassessment, Steve talked earlier about us moving from a 
paper medical record to an electronic medical record. We've implemented the first part of that with our CERNA patient administration system and we'll continue to implement that, the next part of which is to get electronic documentation. That means that if you're seen by one of our clinicians at one of our sites, electronically another clinician at another site will be able to see your medical record and will not need to ask you all those questions again. That is the next part of the implementation of our electronic patient medical record. What's the time scale for that? So at the moment, as you've heard, we are...